نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل على سيدنا ولان محمد وعلى على سل على سيدنا ولان محمد مبارك سل عليه سلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله We've been talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam and you know last time we started talking about a little bit about Ishaq alayhi salam and, and the glad tidings that the angels brought, brought about his birth and of course also when they brought the glad tidings of Ishaq alayhi salam they also brought the glad tidings of a grandson to Ibrahim alayhi salam Yaqub alayhi salam and so today inshallah we'll start talking about uh, Yusuf alayhi salam uh, and the connection with Yaqub al-Islam, so both of these uh, narrations go hand in hand. One point that I want to make here, though, is that, you know, as we've mentioned before, you know, Rasulullah Sussum says that he was passed down from generation to generation, from a pure womb, or from a pure loin to a pure womb. And so, of course, that that nur of Rasulullah Sallam came into Ibrahim Alaihissalam, and then from Ibrahim Alaihissalam it was passed on to Ismail Alaihissalam, and then from Ismail Alaihissalam through the generations until it came into uh, the father of Rasulullah Sallam, Hazrat Abdullah radiAllahu anhu, and then eventually manifest itself as Rasulullah Sallam himself. Rasulullah Sussum also he said, you know, when he said that he was passed from a pure lo- uh, loin to a pure womb, he says he was passed down through the best of generations, you know, to the best of each generation. So this is a point, important point to understand uh, and to contemplate as well, because it has many connotations to it, which I'm not going to go into right now. Uh, inshallah, we'll talk more about that when we come back to. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu and start talking about the lineage through Ismail alayhi salam uh, inshallah uh, but coming back here to Yaqub alayhi salam and Yusuf alayhi salam you know the story of Yusuf alayhi salam which is contained in surah number 12 surah Yusuf you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to as the best of narrations you know it's the only story in the Quran which appears in one place uh, you know if you look at the story of stories of Musa al-Islam you know you have parts of them here parts of them there you know and various places throughout the Quran uh, the same way with the various stories of other prophets you know they're not contained in one place because the focus isn't the story itself it's the lesson uh, that we get from all of this you know and, and then to be able to apply those lessons to our lives now uh, of course, all of these things, as we said, and I will keep saying, is are, are pointing toward Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his status. So, when we start reading Surah Yusuf, uh, in you know, surah, surah number twelve, you know, the surah again, Allah subhanahu wa taala introduces the surah by saying the be- you know, referring it, referring to it as the best of narrations. But we see, you know, it starts off with Yusuf al-Islam telling his father about a dream that he had. You know, and the surah will end with the fulfillment of that dream. You know, Yaqub al-Islam, who is the grandson of Ibrahim al-Islam, uh, he had two wives. Uh, the older wife, uh, the first wife, he had ten sons from her. And the second wife, who is the younger sister of the first wife, you know, he had two sons from her. And at this time, it was not against 
the Sharia or not against the law to marry two sisters at the same time. Uh, during the time, you know, during in the law of Rasulullah Sallallahu in the Sharia of Rasulullah Sallallahu that is not allowed. So Yaqub al Islam has ten sons from one wife, two sons from the other wife. So he has a total of twelve sons, and one of the nicknames of Yaqub al Islam was Is Israel, which is where we get Bani Israel from, or the children of Israel al Israel, or the children of Israel uh, in English. Uh, which uh, are the progeny of these twelve sons, you know, and their and the and the clans and tribes that came from them. Yeah, of the twelve sons that he, uh, of Yaqub al Islam, only one Yusuf al Islam was a prophet. And of course, you have other prophets that come from the lineage of these other sons, but. Uh, of, of these direct sons, only Yusuf al-Islam is a prophet. And of course, Yaqub al-Islam's focus and attention was more on Yusuf al-Islam. You know, this was a natural inclination because, because of the physical as well as the spiritual beauty of Yusuf al-Islam and Bin Yabin, who was his younger brother, or Benjamin in English. So this created an issue between the older sons and these two younger sons. And of course, there's going to be this natural jealousy because they're, all of them are vying for their father's attention. Yusuf al-Islam, he sees a dream. And this is when he's very young. You know, a young boy, he sees a dream in which he sees 11 stars, the sun and the moon bowing down to him. Not bowing down, but prostrating to him. You know, the wording is li sajideen. You know, ahada ashara kaukabam was shamsa wal qamara li sajideen. You know, the, the 11 stars, the, the, star, the sun and the moon, they prostrate themselves to Yusuf alayhi salam. So when he wakes up after seeing this dream, he tells his father in private. You know, he tells his father that, you know, I've seen this. And his father, he says to him, he says that, you know, that do not tell this or say any mention of this in any way to your brothers. You know, otherwise they may plan something against you. Uh, they may have a plot or do something or cause some harm to you. And then when he says this, at the end he says, you know, as he's telling Yusuf al-Islam not to tell his brothers, he says that, you know, and shaitan uh, is an avowed enemy to mankind. Inna shaitan lil insani aduwum mubin. That shaitan is an avowed enemy of mankind. Which is very interesting, and I'm going to come back. There are two points here that I want to make. One is that when Yaqub al Islam, you know, he says, okay, to Yusuf al Islam, don't tell your brothers, you know, otherwise they may plan something against you, you know, out of jealousy, or, you know, their jealousy towards you. He doesn't say, he doesn't blame the brothers. You know, he doesn't say anything against them. He says, Shaitan is an avowed enemy of mankind. You know, which is a very important point for the parents to understand. You know, that you, Yaqub al-Islam, he, you know, he didn't say, oh, you know, curse your brothers, they might plan something against you. Uh, because the curse of the parents on the children is something that's very severe. Uh, and so we need to be very careful, you know, when, you know, our children, they do something that, you know, we don't approve of as to how we word our response, that we don't, you know, send the curse of Allah upon them because the prayer of the parents for their children is accepted. Uh, and so, you know, we, if we do this, then we should not expect them to, do, you know, to change their behavior. You know, if we're sending Allah's curse upon them, then they're going to continue to do what, you know, what we disapprove of. And so, again, you know, there's something that the parents need to be very careful with. The other point here is that he tells his, his son, don't tell anybody this. You know, when Rasulullah Sallallahu he told us, you know, about dreams. You know, he told us that, you know, there are three kinds that, you know, of course, the dreams of prophets are always true. They are part of revelation. And this is why Yaqub al-Islam, he knew what Yusuf al-Islam was saying would be fulfilled. But he didn't want any problems in between. 
So, but the dreams of the regular people, you know, for us, you know, there are three kinds. Either something we're thinking about, something from shaitan, or, you know, something good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good. So, you know, if we see a bad dream, then Rasulullah told us, you know, that we turn our heads toward the left and three times spit like this and say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan ar-rajim wa min sharri hadhi ru'ya. You know, I seek refuge from Allah uh, or with Allah from, from shaitan and the evil of what I have seen. And we change our position. You know, if it's in the middle of night and we're not getting up, then we change our position. You know, and he said that, you know, if you do this, then no harm, and don't tell anybody this, and no harm will come to you. Uh, but even the good dreams, you know, he said, tell, tell those who are your well-wishers. So you don't tell the dreams to just everybody or anybody. You know, it's somebody who wants good for you. Those are the people that you tell dream, the, the good dreams to. You know, otherwise, you know, there are other things that can happen. And so these are two important points to, to note just from this one part of, the, of, the, of this story. The, you know, so after this, of course, Yusuf al-Islam, he didn't tell anybody anything. Uh, but, you know, the brothers who are jealous of, of their two younger brothers, the ten older ones, they're jealous of the two younger ones because Yaqub al-Islam's attention is focused on those two. The older ones, you know, he doesn't pay too much attention to them. So they get together one day and they say, you know, that, that our father's love is, you know, focused on Yusuf and his brother. You know, while we ourselves, you know, we are a very strong group. So he should be, you know, paying more attention to us. And they say, you know, when they're talking about this, they say uh, that, uh, mubin. You know, and if, if I take a literal translation for that, you'd say, you know, adu, he misguided, uh, you know, he's, or he's wholly misguided, which is not what they're talking about. You know, here when they're saying adu mubin, that he's, you know, and a lot of translators will translate as manifest error, you know, it's that he's just, his love is so focused on Yusuf and, and Bin Yabin that he's neglecting the rest of us, you know, that he's madly in love with him. And so they say, okay, you know, he's doing this, so how do we redirect his attention towards us? So one of them says, well, let's kill Yusuf. You know, get him out of the way. You know, if he's out of the way, then you know, he's, you know, our father's going to have no other option but to start loving and looking, you know, paying more attention to us and loving us more. The eldest of them, Yehuda, he said, no, you know, let's not kill him. You know. Let's take him and throw him into a well. Uh, and then that way, you know, a caravan coming by will, will, you know, they'll stop for water and they'll end up pulling him out and then they'll take him wherever they're going. You know, and we'll be rid of him without killing him. Uh, and, you know, and at the same time, we've accomplished what we wanted to do. So they come to their father one morning and they say, you know, why don't you, you know, you send Yusuf with us to come and play. You know, he's a young boy, he's growing and, you know, he can come and he can play with us outside. Uh, we'll go off and, you know, have a good time. And Yaqub al-Islam, he responds to them. You know, he says that I've, you know, it saddens me to let him go with you. You know, because I fear that, you know, you will become negligent of him and a wolf will come and eat him. Which is very interesting on multiple levels. You know, it tells us that Yaqub al-Islam already knows what they're planning. Again, all of them are under his jurisdiction here, which we've talked about before. And Yaqub al-Islam himself being a prophet, you know, Rasulullah told us, you know, that Allah SWT has made it haram on the wolves to eat the prophets. Yaqub al-Islam knows this, yet this is, the, this is what he says to them. He says, I'm, you know, if you take him, then I'm afraid, well, you know, 
just uh, you know this wolf will come and eat him while you're off doing your thing they turn around with you know how can that happen you know we're such a strong group you know if 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 that were to happen if something were to happen to him while he's in our you know in our company then you know we are truly losers so eventually Yaqub al Islam he sends Yusuf al Islam with with them and this is an important point we're going to come back to this inshallah so they go and you know they get out you know far away and uh, uh, you know from their father and all the ten of them they grab Yus Yusuf al Islam and you know they're close to this well and they take his shirt off and they throw him down the well and as he's being thrown down the well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires Yusuf salam and he says to him that, you know, don't worry. You know, you will surely remind them of this situation one day when they don't perceive. Yeah. So Yusuf salam is thrown down into the well. You know, they take, in the meantime, up here, you know, they and the brothers they take the shirt and they kill a, a, sh a lamb and they stain the shirt with with the lamb's blood and they come you know it's late night and they come back and they're all crying you know oh you know and Yaqub al-Islam he comes out and he says what's happened and they say to Yaqub al-Islam that oh you know we we got busy and playing and we left Yusuf uh, at Islam with our th belongings and you know we weren't paying attention and when we got back you know a wolf had eaten him and all that remains is his shirt yeah. you know, Yaqub al-Islam he says you know he says to them that you know the you know what you're saying I know what you're saying is it, in essence what he says I know what you're saying to me you know, but for me, it, it, Allah is patience. You know. And they, said, they say to their father that you won't believe us even if we're telling the truth. Yeah. And he says, you know, I know what you have done. I know what you have schemed. But for me, simply it's patience. Yeah. Which again tells us Yaqub al-Islam knows what's going on. And he knows the condition of Yusuf al-Islam. You know, but he also knows the will of Allah. You know, because people ask, well, if he knew, then why did he let him go? You know, because he knew what Allah's will was, and he bowed himself to that will. You know, and so he let his son go. You know, even though that physical separation will hurt him so much, you know, he will cry so much that he will go blind, but still he knows that this is Allah's will. You know, and so, so he sends his son, uh, so that because he told his son when he told when when his son told him of the dream, he told him that Allah Subhanahu will teach you the interpretations of things, you know, and he will establish you in the land. And so, how is that establishment to come come about other than through this process? And this is one of the things that we learn, you know, as we're dealing with the story of Yusuf al Islam. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى That, إِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى That after every hardship comes ease. After every hardship comes ease. And we see this throughout the story of Yusuf al Islam. You know, and, and I'll come back to this point as well. There are many points that I'm going to kind of skip over and come back to and just kind of as we go, go on. But... You know, so he tells his sons that, you know, for me is patience and that's all I can do. You know, but another thing that interesting that thing that he said, you know, when he looked at in this, which is not mentioned in Surah Yusuf, but when he looked at the shirt, there weren't any holes. You know, it was stained, but it wasn't even torn. So he asked his son, he says, what type of wolf was this that, you know, it, it ate Yusuf without, without tearing his shirt? Yeah. Now in the meantime, when they threw Yusuf al-Islam in the well, and you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired upon Yusuf al-Islam that, you know, don't worry, just you know, be calm. You know, you're going to be safe. You will remind them of this later, and they won't perceive it. 
or they won't perceive who you are. Uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, as he was thrown into the well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Jibreel al-Islam to catch him. Jibreel al-Islam, of course, was at Sudrat al-Muntaha, which is the limit of creation. He leaves there and he catches Yusuf al-Islam before he lands in the water in the, in the well on the tip of his wing. And he lays him down in there softly or gently. And Yusuf al-Islam, there's a stone there in, in, at the bottom of the well next to the water. He climbs up on that and he, he sits there, you know, waiting. But of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already, you know, sent peace upon his heart. And so he's calmly waiting there until, you know, a caravan which is passing by. Uh, they send one man to go get some water. The man goes and lowers the bucket and when he pulls it up, you know, realizes that oh, it's heavy, he looks in and then he sees Yusuf al-Islam, this young boy clinging to the, to the bucket. He pulls him out and he sees him and he says, wow, you know, this beautiful child. And uh, so he goes to his companion. He says, "Ah, oh, you know, we found this. I found this child in this well." So they they figure, "Well, we can get some money for him. So let's take him." They were headed to Egypt. So from Canaan, Yusuf al Islam is taken all the way to Egypt, and Allah Subhanahu wa says that he was sold there for just you know a meager price. And so you know they sell him. Uh, and the person who buys him is, you know, Aziz al-Misr. He's like the chief uh, minister or one of the chief ministers to the king in Egypt. So he looks upon Yusuf and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inclines everybody towards Yusuf. And this is one of the things uh, of prophets in general. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the aspects of prophethood is beauty. You know, that way no one has an excuse that, oh, you know, he, he, he looked so bad, I just didn't even want to listen to him. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed all the excuses that anybody could have against his, his messengers and his prophets. You know, so, of course, Yusuf al-Islam's beauty, even among the prophets, is something uh, that's uh, very distinguished. So, you know, they would see, you know, anyone who would see him, his heart would immediately be inclined towards him. And uh, the, you know, and there is uh, a narration that anyone from the time that Yusuf al-Islam left Canaan until he got to Egypt, anyone who even looked upon Yusuf al-Islam with a smile uh, or, or gave him water or was kind to him in any way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not, did not allow them to die without Iman. And this has implications when we talk about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when they sell him, you know, they're in a rush to get to sell him. You know, and they're wondering who could have, you know, uh, abandoned this beautiful child. And so when Aziz or this uh, minister of Egypt he sees him, you know, he immediately his heart is inclined, so he buys him and they sell him for a very, you know, very uh, low price, cheap. You know, so Aziz is getting a bargain. And he takes him to his home and, you know, he's married to uh, this very beautiful woman whose, whose name is Zulaikha. The name is not mentioned in the Quran, but her name is Zulaikha. And he says to his wife, he says that, you know, I brought this, this child you know, so make his, his stay here comfortable, you know, that we will benefit from him and perhaps we will adopt him as a son, you know, because they didn't have any children. And so Yusuf al-Islam grows up in this household. Yeah. And the people of Egypt, however, are not Muslim. They're not believers. They worship various other things. And this will be significant later on, inshallah. But... Uh, you know, and again, there are lessons upon lessons that we gain from this. Uh, so, when we remember, you know, when we read Surah Yusuf, and I'm going to encourage everybody to read Surah Yusuf, read the translation of Surah Yusuf, and it'll make it easy to, to pick up on what I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh, the, 
the lessons are, are the main thing in all of this. You know, the Quran is not a storybook, it's a book of lessons. So, you know, we'll come to what happens in the house of, of the Aziz or, or the minister uh, next time, inshallah. Uh, so, you know, just, uh, but remember this, you know, two things from the very beginning, you know, as far as dreams. Uh, the other aspect of dreams, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later on, is that the same dream for two different people can have two different meanings, depending on the background of the person. So, you know, that's why it's not easy to interpret dreams. Uh, and those who, who deal with this field, they understand, or, or who correctly deal with this field, they understand this point. Uh, and uh, so, and, you know, but uh, the knowledge, you know, all of this, of course, Yusuf al-Islam is, is, was taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and this is where Yaqub al-Islam, he says to his son that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach you the interpretations of events, not just dreams, but every, all these other events, uh, and uh, make you firm. Uh, so may, may, I, may we under, try to understand this uh, and take lessons from all of this uh, and uh, apply those lesson, lessons to ourselves uh, before we try to apply them to everybody else. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Muhammadin wa ala ala salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Muhammadin Baruch salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and make it easy, easy for us to do those things which please you and stay away from those things which displease you. And fill our hearts with your love and the true love of your beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his companions and all of those whom you love. Uh, and make us uh, or allow us to fulfill the rights of this month of Ramadan and keep everybody safe. Uh, and those who are, who are being oppressed in any, in any way, protect them and uh, give them authority over their oppressors and uh, uh, allow us to feel the, the, the pains and the difficulties of the Ummah uh, as a whole. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayra khalqihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in bi rahmatihi ya rahmatihi